Welcome to the podcast of Politics and Profits, everyone. I'm Rick Amato. So glad you joined us. And, you know, it, it of course, is a hard-hitting news day, uh, but we like to... We like to uh, lighten things up from time to time with interesting stories of uh, human interest. And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, we have one such story today. Joining me at this time on the Newsmaker line is a uh, individual who many of you are familiar with. He is, the, he is the Fox News chief national correspondent, Ed Henry. Ed joins me from New York City at this time. Ed, welcome to Politics and Profits. Thanks. It's great to be on with you. Now, Ed, you've written a new book. Uh, the book is called 42 Faith, The Rest of the Jackie Robinson Story. Now, when I first read yep. that, when I first found out that you wrote a book about Jackie Robinson, what went through my head, uh, Ed Henry, was, what else is there to know about Jackie Robinson? There's been so many books and movies, and it's been decades. But as a matter of fact, there is something that has been recently uh, discovered, as it, as it, so to speak, in uh, who Jackie Robinson yeah. was. And that's what you've done. Tell us about what you learned in this. Uh, well, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I got some new information about how Branch Rickey, the general manager of the Dodgers, had some second thoughts about whether or not he could really go through with signing Jackie to the first contract in 45 to uh, the minor leagues. Of course, 47 is when Jackie actually was uh, promoted up to the big leagues and played his first game at Ebbets Field. We're about to celebrate the 70th anniversary of that. The book release is timed uh, to that in part, but we call it 42 Faith because, of course, Jackie's number was 42 and it's been retired by Major League Baseball so that no one for any team can ever wear it again because of his awesome legacy in civil rights, not just baseball, of course. Uh, and 42 was the subject of that famous movie, which I think was quite good, but did not tell, as you suggest, the rest of the story, which is about faith. So that's why we call it 42 Faith, because I think there's a whole other dimension to this, that Branch Rickey and Jackie Robinson were propelled together in history uh, with some connective tissue that was surrounded by a love for baseball and a deep faith in God. Those were the only two things that really brought them together. If you think about it, one white man, one black man, different generations that came from different regions of the country. But the connective tissue here was a love for baseball and a deep faith in God. And so I got some new information in the book suggesting that Brand Tricky had some second thoughts in 1945 before signing Jackie to the contract, but had a secret meeting with a minister in Brooklyn that sort of put him over the top. Uh, and I'll let you get the details in the book, but the point is it led me on a journey to figure out how important faith was in informing Branch Rickey's decision to sign Jackie, but maybe more importantly, how important was it in Jackie overcoming these long odds? Many people thought, you know, this great experiment would not succeed. Uh, and really how he leaned on his faith, Jackie did, in order to overcome all of the verbal abuse and you know, threats on his life and all the rest that came simply because he was a black man who wanted to play baseball. How is it that this story of Jackie Robinson's faith, Branch Rickey's faith, has only become known uh, recently that it was not part of the story of who they were? Well, I think. Yeah, go ahead. You know, Branch Rickey's faith was well known and has been mentioned in some of the books. And in the movie, there are some allusions to God. Uh, and I think that's because Branch Rickey wore it on his sleeve a little more. One of his nicknames was the Mahatma because he was always preaching. Uh, another nickname was El Cheapo because he was always slashing the salaries of the players. That's a whole nother <laughs> podcast, I suppose. Uh, but Jackie was maybe somebody with a more quiet faith. It didn't mean he was less faithful. I suspect there are a lot of people listening to this now who have a quiet faith about him. They're not showy about it. They're not preaching on the street corner here in New York City or wherever uh, they're listening right now. And uh, that's fine. Each his own. And I think uh, the other reason you haven't heard about it a lot is, you know, Hollywood doesn't talk about God much. Hollywood doesn't talk about the role of faith much. And so when you tell the Hollywood version of the story of Jackie Robinson and Branch Rickey coming together, I don't think faith 
is high on the list. You know, baseball is, and rightly so. Civil rights is, and rightly so. Uh, and other uh, important dimensions to the story as well. But faith, I think, is kind of the next dimension of the story. And I thought it was finally time to tell that story. How is it because faith is important to you, Ed Henry? Sure. I mean, it's important to me, as I suspect it is to you and to to many uh, folks listening right now. Uh, I'm imperfect. Uh, I think we're all imperfect. I think that uh, Jackie Robinson, I found in his writings, uh, said, uh, as he got very personal about his own faith, uh, that he felt there were much better Christians than he was. But he tried his best, and he didn't want to let down his mom, uh, Mally Robinson, who was a very faithful woman. And he didn't want to let down Mr. Ricky, who, uh, as we just discussed, also had a very strong faith. And I find it interesting that uh, maybe coincidental, maybe not, that they were both Methodists. Um, they were that, That's the way they were both raised. Uh, and Jackie's mom instilled that faith in him early on. She was a single mom. His father left home early. Uh, and he joined a gang without a father influence in his life when he was growing up in Pasadena, California. Hmm. Uh, and it was because of a Christian minister, Reverend Carl Downs, that that uh, said, hey, Jack, you better wake up or you're going to waste all this athletic talent on, on, on being in a gang. He had an arrest record and all the like. Wow. Uh, and that's why I think two things happened. Number one, yeah, isn't that amazing how, you know, without this minister, uh, just as Ricky had a minister or, and more than one minister, but one in particular from that secret meeting that helped him in his decision making, without this minister in Pasadena, Jackie Robinson may not have gotten on the right road. Uh, and two things happened, uh, among others. One is that when he, you know, with the minister's help, he got back on the right path. Jackie was a four-letter man at UCLA, meaning he started four sports, baseball, basketball, football. That's track amazing. And, and he, some say that if, yeah, some say that if he had gone to the NFL instead of baseball, he might have been better than Jim Brown or other halfbacks, hmm. but he would get all beaten and bruised on the field, the gridiron on Saturday, and says in his own memoirs, Jackie, that on Sunday morning, he didn't want to get out of bed. He wanted to rest after the big football game on Saturday, but he got out of bed because that minister, Carl Downs, had recruited him to teach Sunday school in Pasadena, and so hmm. he'd leave UCLA and, and go over to Pasadena for Sunday school, and finally, I'd say that uh, Jackie's own wife, who's still alive, Rachel Robinson, recalls that uh, his rookie year of 1947, as I said, we're about to celebrate the 70th anniversary of that, uh, or we are already, I suppose. Um, she remembers, Rachel Robinson, that in that rookie year, every night when he came home from Ebbets Field, when he was home, he'd go to his New York City apartment, get down on his knees, Jackie Robinson, hmm. and pray, just like his mother and Carl Downs had taught him. So clearly faith was not just something he found when he was being abused on and off the baseball field. It was something that was important through his whole life. And that's really an inspiring story. And and I asked if faith was important to you because I know you graduated graduated from Siena College in New York, which uh, for listeners who may not be aware of, that's yep. a Roman Catholic college. Um, what really yep. surprised me in your book, Ed Henry, is that you say that Branch Rickey, even at his age, uh, wanted nothing more than to make his God-fearing mother proud of him. What about that? Yeah. There's a great story. Well, there's a great story there, which is in the early 1900s, I walked you through a little bit of Jackie's childhood and coming of age in Pasadena. Uh, and I mentioned that Branch Rickey came of age, you know, in the Midwest and near the Kentucky border and Ohio on a farm. Uh, and he went to his mother in the early 1900s and said, I want to be a big league baseball player long before Jackie Robinson got to be one. And his mother said, no. She said that baseball players, all they do is drink alcohol and swear and party, and she didn't want her son to do that. She may have been right, uh, so she put her foot down. But as you can imagine, based on how the rest of the story plays out, Brent Tricky did not take no for an answer. You know, Brent Tricky did not go down lightly. He was a schemer and a dreamer, uh, and he slept on it, came back to her and said, okay, let's make a deal. What if you let me pursue my dream? And I'll promise you that I will never, ever play on Sunday. And so she said, okay. And so Brand Tricky actually did make wow. the big leagues for a relatively brief time. He was a catcher. He wasn't uh, a very good one uh, and was out of the league within a few seasons, in part because the cheap owners of these teams, you know, they didn't make a lot of money in those days like these big athletes today. Um, and by the way, I don't think a lot of these big athletes today are as rooted in faith as 
Jackie Robinson was, some of his teammates like Ralph Branca and Carl Erskine, who I get into in the book. If you're a baseball fan, there's a lot of great tales from the Brooklyn Dodgers dugout, a lot about the the great uh, shot heard around the world, October 3rd, 1951, Giants, Dodgers, <laughs> uh, and some new information from Carl Erskine, a story he's never told. So if you're a baseball fan, you're going to love it. But on the faith point, you know, I, I just think that uh, it's very clear to me uh, that, uh, when Ricky, uh, you know, made that promise to his mom, it had an impact on the owners who said, look, you're getting a full-time pay for basically, uh, not pl- even though you don't play on Sundays, uh, he eventually got bounced, uh, from baseball, but came back as, as an executive. And I guess the key point that I'd leave you on about branch Ricky is his grandson is still alive, told me, and, and I talk about it in the book that, even when he was a kind of a famous executive for the Brooklyn Dodgers and his parents had long since died, Branch Rickey could have said, Oh, well, I need to go to the ballpark on Sunday. I'm the boss. I need to be there. And my parents aren't around anyway. And so the promise I made is sort of, you know, we can move on from that. No, he still would not go to the ballpark on Sundays uh, when he was with the Brooklyn Dodgers in the forties, he would listen to the game on the radio, listen to red Barber, like a lot of Dodger fans did Mm. the great uh, old redhead, red Barber. We get into (laughs) a lot of stories about him in the book too. And he plays a big role. Um, And I find that interesting. It shows that he was very serious about his faith and he was very serious about honoring his parents' faith. And that's also a lesson for all of us. Again, the book is called 42 faith. The rest of the Jackie Robinson story, it's available at Amazon.com and elsewhere. The author joins me this time, Ed Henry. He's, of course, the Fox News chief national correspondent. Ed, before we let you go, um, you mentioned Branch Rickey's grandson is still alive. Were you able to connect with any uh, uh, offspring or descendants of, of, of the Jackie Robinson uh, lineage? Yeah, I spoke very briefly, uh, actually, on the book tour here uh, with uh, David Robinson, who's the surviving son of Jackie Robinson, just by coincidence. It wasn't a planned meeting. Uh, We both spoke at an event honoring Jackie at the Brooklyn Historical Society. And, you know, he's a man of few words. You know, it's hard to live up to the legacy of of a man like Jackie Robinson as your dad. Uh, But he did quite well, you know, telling, sharing a couple quick stories. Uh, to this group that was at the Brooklyn Historical Society the other night. I did interview a few years ago his uh, wife, Rachel, uh, and who I mentioned is still alive, and she gave me a couple of good anecdotes that are in the book. Uh, and I spoke a couple of times to Sharon Robinson, who's a surviving daughter of Jackie uh, Robinson, and, and uh, she also speaks, of course, very warmly about her dad. And I mean, one thing that sticks out about to me about that is, you know, one, the last – point maybe that we hadn't gotten into is that, you know, Jackie sadly died so young, uh, 1972, he's only 53 years old. That means he didn't get to live to see the first black president, the first black manager in baseball two or three years after he died. Uh, Frank Robinson was that manager. Um, And I think that it would have been pretty incredible for Jackie Robinson to live a longer, fuller life and see the progress that's been made in this country. Uh, but Sharon Robinson told me this story about how, you know, the stress of being the first was yeah. really weighing him down. He had diabetes. Uh, and she told this story that was sad to me about how, you know, he was being honored at the Apollo Theater once when she was a young girl. And he took his daughter there with pride to this event. And, you know, they got separated for a minute because, you know, a bunch of people were shaking his hand or taking pictures, maybe autographs. And so they got separated and his eyesight was so bad from diabetes that he couldn't find his daughter. And she kind of got scared because she was young enough where she, she couldn't find her dad. He couldn't find her. And of course they were reunited. Don't want to exaggerate it, but she was saying that, you know, because of the diabetes, his eyesight was, was going uh, early on. And, uh, you know, obviously it's sad that someone like Jackie Robinson uh, for all the good things he was able to accomplish in his life and leave this wonderful legacy because of discrimination. And he didn't get to start his baseball career the way some of these young guys like Bryce Harper or Mike Trout in baseball get to start when they're 18, 19, 20 years old. He started in the majors when he was 28. So he missed out on a lot of seasons hmm. in his prime. Wow. And then on the back half of it, after retiring, you know, he dies at the age of 53. So he doesn't, he did get to make the hall of fame and he lived for that. And that's wonderful and a wonderful honor. But, you know, the fruits of all of his labor and seeing, you know, other uh, key institutions integrated and, and, and like I said, progress being made, he didn't get to live to see that. So uh, he leaves a wonderful legacy, but I think it's also sad that he didn't get to stay around longer. 
Yeah, I, I think you, that's very well put. And again, Ann Henry, we, we thank you for joining us. As I say, it's it's a hard, it's it's a big news day. It is always these days, but it's nice. It's nice to <clears throat> change things up with stories like heartwarming stories like this and inspirational stories as well. Yeah. It really is, and it's great to talk to you. 42faithbook.com. Take care. All right. Ed Henry, Fox News Chief National Correspondent, thank you for joining us. 